everybody, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to play the guitar solo from the song Love Walks In from Van Halen. Now, unlike most Van Halen songs, where you tune your guitar down one half step, because this is a keyboard dominant song, Van Halen kept his guitar in standard tuning. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump on into it. All right, I'm going to hold off on the music theory discussion until the very end. It'll make sense why I'm doing that when we get there. Uh, so section one goes like this, at normal, and then slow speed. Alright, so we're going to cut this section in half, and the first half is where it goes. All right. What you're doing there is you're going to slide up to the 18th fret of the B string and then give it some vibrato. Then you're going to play the 15th fret of the high E. Then you're going to go back to the B string, and you're going to play the 18th fret, slide quickly to the 20th. Okay? You don't want to linger on that 18th like this. You want to go through it quick. So here's what we have so far. All right. Then we're going to play the 17th fret of the high E, followed by a 20th fret B string bend. You're going to bend up a full step, give it some vibrato, bring it back down, slide down. Okay. All right. Then in the second half, we're going to slide back up to that 18th fret B string note, give it some vibrato, 15th fret high E, then we're going to play the 18th fret of the B, bend up a full step, and you notice how I've tabbed it, you hold it for just a little bit, then you're going to play the 15th fret of the high E, followed by the 18th fret of the B vibrato. Okay. So here's this whole section, one more time, slowly. All right, let's keep moving. All right, section two goes like this at normal speed, and then we'll slow it down. So in the first box, we're going to go like this. So we're going to play the 17th fret of the high E, hammer on to 20, pull off to 17. Then we're going to hammer back onto the 20th fret of the high E. And then simultaneously we're going to do a whammy bar dip while we're bending. Okay? And then you come down from that bend halfway, not all the way. <laughs> now if you come all the way down, most people aren't going to notice, but again, as usual, I'm trying to get as accurate to the original as possible. Then you're going to play the 18th fret of the B string with some vibrato. So far we have... Then we're going to play the 20th fret of the B string. And then the second time we play the 20th fret, we're going to bend it up a half a step first, which is the equivalent of one fret, okay? <laughs> then the third bend, you're going to start up at that half step up position, then you're going to bend up another half step, which is the so you're basically taking it up, you know, to the full step position, and then bring it down. <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain, but it's much more simpler to do. Um, if you want, and I see a lot of people do this, instead of doing the um, half step pre bend on that third 20th fret note. You can just do a full bend step, uh, full step bend up, okay. But again, I want to get it as accurate to the original as possible. And then from there, you're pulling off to the 18th fret, and then hammering back onto the 20th bend up vibrato, okay. And then you're going to pull off from that 20th fret bend to the 18th fret, hammer on to 22 with a uh, whammy bar dip at the same time, and then pull off to 18, hammer back on to 20 with another whammy bar dip. Give it some vibrato and then slide down your low E string. 
<laughs> that part really is more simple than it sounds. It's just tabbing in it and explaining it is a little bit tricky. So um, let me play the whole section again one more time slowly. All right, let's keep moving. All right, now section three is basically the same thing as section one. So I'm not gonna go ahead and re-explain all that. You can go back to section one if you want, if you need to relearn it. Um, but one thing I wanna call out is that um, I'm often tempted, instead of doing that 18 to 20 slide, quick slide, I'm often, often tempted to bend it, okay? Um, you can certainly do that if you want, but I think Eddie's doing a slide there. All right, let's keep moving. All right, section four goes like this. So the first part is where you go. So what's going on there is you're going to play the 17th fret of the high E followed by 18. Okay, a little staccato choppy feel. Stop the notes after you play them, right? And then you're going to play the 20th fret of the high E, pull off to 18, hammer on to 20, pull off to 18, 17. Then you're going to hammer back onto the 20th fret of the high E, give it a little whammy bar dip, half a step down, pull off to 17. So here's the second half slowly. So what you're doing is you're starting up, remember when you left off up here at that position? Um, you're gonna slide down to the 13th fret of the B string and then bend up, okay? A lot of people miss that slide down. Um, and then you're gonna do another 13th fret B string bend, up, down, pull off to 10. Then 12 G, 10 B. Then a 12th fret G string bend up, down, pull off to 10. 12th fret D. 10th fret B and then 10th fret G. And that 10th fret G is a, a wide vibrato, up and down twice. I could have tapped it as a bend up and down, but I consider it a wide vibrato, okay? So here's that second half, slowly. All right, here's the whole section, slowly. All right, let's keep moving. All right, section five has the ascending run. Let me play that slower. Now I've seen people play this part a lot of different ways. And it was a bit challenging to decipher the notes within the mix, um, not only because they go by so quickly, um, but they're kind of mushy in the mix at certain parts. So I had to really slow it down and try to isolate the guitar frequencies. And uh, it was a, quite a bit of work, but this is what I came up with. And actually, I've seen it tab this way before, so others have come up with the same interpretation. Um, and so the way I look at it is um, the majority of it till the end are little groups of six, okay? So in the first one, what you're doing is you're sliding up to the seventh fret of the A string, hammer on to eight, hammer on to 10, pull off to seven, hammer on to eight, hammer on to 10, okay? Then in the second box, you're gonna play the seventh fret of the D string, followed by eighth fret of A, hammer on to 10. And then you're gonna play seventh fret of D, hammer on eight, 10, same string, okay? Then you're gonna play seventh fret of G, hammer on to nine, 10. And then you're going to play, this is where it gets kind of tricky, 8th fret B, hammer on to 10, pull off to 6. Notice the finger I'm, fingering I'm using. I'll, I'll finger the 8th fret with my middle finger, 10th fret pinky, 6th fret uh, index finger. Okay. And then in the 4th box, you're going to um, slide up from that 6th uh, fret note you just played to the 8th fret. 
hammer on to 12, pull off to 8. Then you're going to play 10th fret of the B, slide up to 12, and then 13. And then the final two notes are 12 and 13 of the B string. Here's the section one more time, very slow. Okay. Now I know your fingers get a little bit jumbled up there on the uh, B string, but you gotta practice it slowly, get it down cleanly, and work it up to the right speed. Let's keep moving. All right, in section six, we're gonna start with those tapped harmonics. And uh, you've gotta use a lot of gain for this part if you really want the harmonics to pop out. And of course, you know, Eddie's got his amp cranked in the studio, and of course, live, to help facilitate that. Um, this is really more gain than I typically use for my lead tones, but um, you're gotta, you've gotta do it if you really want them to pop out. So we're going to start by fretting the 5th fret of the D string and then tapping a 17th fret harmonic up here. And then do the same thing on the G string. Fret the 5th fret, 17th fret harmonic tap. Okay. Give it some vibrato. Then you're going to tap again at that 17th fret harmonic, bend up and down. Then you're going to tap at the 12th fret harmonic. Again, you're still rooted at the 5th fret down here on G. Uh, 12th fret harmonic, tap, bend up, down, and then another bend up, down more quickly, okay? And then some vibrato. A lot of people miss that quick second bend in there. Now you're still fretting that 5th fret of the G string, but you're going to tap the 10th fret harmonic this time, bend up, down, and some vibrato. Then you're going to change your fretting hand to the 7th fret, and you're going to tap the harmonic at the 19th fret. Bend up and down. Then you're going to switch back down to the 5th fret with your G, tap the harmonic at the 17th fret, and then slide your finger up to the 7th fret, okay? With some vibrato, all right? Here's this section one more time, slowly. All right, let's move to the last section. All right, the final section goes. All right, so first thing you're gonna do, just like last section, is you're gonna start by fretting the fifth fret of the D string and tapping the 17th fret harmonic. And then do the same thing on the G string. Fifth fret down here, 17th fret tapped harmonic above with some vibrato. Then, keeping your finger fretted at the 5th fret of the G string, you're going to do another 17th fret harmonic tap, bend up, down, up. Okay? And then quickly move up to the 9th fret here and tap a 21 uh, fret harmonic. Then you're going to fret the 8th fret of the B string and tap a 20th fret harmonic. Okay, and then after you tap the harmonic, you're going to slide up to the 13th fret and give it some vibrato. Okay. You can hear it sounds a little bit softer, right? It's not as loud and prominent as doing the taps on the G string. You can hear that in Eddie's mix, too. And then finally, we have the little lick at the end that goes... Now, with that one, uh, first of all, you're going to play the 19th fret of the G and the 20th fret of the B at the same time, but you're going to bend up the G string note, okay? And then bend it back down. Right? Kind of classic bluesy type lick. And then you're going to play 18th fret of the B string, hammer on to 20, pull off to 18, pull off to 17. Okay? Then you're going to play the 17th fret of the G string twice, but the second time you hit the note, you're going to bend it up, wait a little bit, give it some vibrato, bring it back down. All 
Here's the section one more time, slowly. All right, let's wrap it up with the music theory discussion. And this is pretty straightforward for a Van Halen solo. There's no weird outside notes or symmetrical patterns. It's very straightforward. So the majority of the first half of the solo, before we get into the tapped harmonics, is primarily F major. Now there are two spots within that F major section where Eddie reverts to F major pentatonic, uh, which has is these notes. So for example, when he goes, Now those notes are all found within the standard F major scale, but still it's more of an F major pentatonic feel. And at one point, he even adds in the minor third to the F major pentatonic scale, which makes it the F major blues scale. And that happens when he does that lick up here. Right? Which basically consists of these notes. Right, so F major pentatonic with the minor third added. Um, and then there is one spot before he goes into the tapped harmonics where on top of a G chord, he shifts to G major, okay? When you're doing that um, ascending run and you get up here onto the B string and he does like that. Right there, he's transitioning from F major to G major, right? So the final few notes of the first half is in G major. Um, and then when we get into the tapped harmonics, that's all basically in C major. So again, for a Van Halen solo, pretty straightforward note choices, nothing funky or weird going on. So that makes it pretty easy to kind of summarize all of the music theory components. All right, that was my lesson on how to play the guitar solo from the song Love Walks In from Van Halen. If you found it helpful, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And please hit that subscribe button if you have not done so already. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below, and I will attempt to answer them as time allows. Until next time, rock on.